Hello besties. Today we're doing the ultimate book video. We need to go book shopping. There have been a bunch of new releases that I have been so freaking excited for. So we are going to go book shopping. We're going to do a little book haul and then we're gonna do a reading vlog. We will be going to get a coffee, but I think we're gonna get a coffee after we go book shopping because otherwise my hands will be trying to balance too many different things. doing sniff inspection. now we got our toy. sniff inspection. I'm very excited about these books. I only found two that I was intending to buy. They didn't have Ghost Smith by Nikki Palpretto. And I needed to have words with them. I was like, I can't find it anywhere. Do y'all have this in stock? And they were like, no, we can order it. And I'm like, how do you not have it in stock? I'm so excited for that book. Um, the other surprising thing was Ami just got released by S.J. Jones. I've talked about this book in my fall book releases, so I'm not going to go through the whole premise for this one again. I will link that video down below if you would like to hear more about this book and one other that I have in this pile. But this is already 50% off and it just got released this month, which I was a little bit surprised about. Sorry, I had to wait for my AC to shut off. It was 
not very cutesy, not very mindful. The second book that I knew I was going to purchase was Lady Macbeth by Ava Reed. I was actually a little bit on the fence about purchasing this one because of some of the reviews that came out, but you know what? The reviews for A Study in Drowning were also very mixed. I don't care. I loved, I gave A Study in Drowning five stars. I was like, I'm gonna buy Lady Macbeth, whatever. The end pages, I know I showed y'all, I showed y'all in store too, but these end pages are so vibey and so beautiful. And then also a hot pink book, like, are you kidding me? Go off, Ava Reed. I will always purchase a hot pink book. So these are what I was expecting to purchase along with Ghost Smith, which they did not have. Then I wasn't expecting this to be in stores because I don't know why it was just a brain fart on my part but a sorceress comes to call by t kingfisher this is a new release by t kingfisher this is the reimagining of the brothers grim the goose girl i also talked about this book in my fall book releases video so he, he go watch that if you want the synopsis for this but i'm thinking we might actually read this book in this vlog and then the last book that i got was a complete surprise i was gently perusing the adult fantasy and sci-fi section i was really really eyeballing all of the brandon sanderson books because i feel like that might be happening soon anyways i picked up annihilation because this this was a cover purchase like really really and truly it has um what do you call that i don't know it has like sparkly bits on the cover this is gorgeous also the inside cover with all of the mushrooms and nature I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by the beauty. It's in the back as well. This sounds so interesting. So this is a sci-fi. It's quite short, but I have heard it is not the most approachable. I've heard that it's very thought provoking by the like five Goodreads reviews I read of it when I was waiting for my coffee. Um, but Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This won the Nebula Award for Best Novel and it says the basis for a major motion picture. I don't know what that means. Maybe they like made a movie out of it and they took inspiration from this book. But this has to do with, oh, it's the 10th anniversary edition. Best, best 10th anniversary edition cover I have ever seen. It is about this area area x that has been cut off from the rest of the continent for decades and nature has reclaimed the last vestiges of human civilization expedition after expedition into area x has failed to uncover its mysteries and the true nature of its danger to the world now a 12th expedition makes the attempt a group of four women an anthropologist a surveyor a psychologist and the narrator who is a biologist their mission is to map the terrain record observations of their surroundings and above all avoid being contaminated by area x so it is a cosmic mystery at the vanguard of eco fiction it might be slow like that's what i'm mentally preparing myself for is it's probably gonna be slow but it's about four women it's a sci-fi it's about this mysterious area x that they're exploring i think it sounds fascinating so we're gonna give this a try um i'm thinking that for this video let's prioritize a sorceress comes to call by t kingfisher because it has been way too long since i've read a t kingfisher and i'm quite excited for this one mm -hmm. six pages in and I seem to have misplaced my bookmark which feels like it always happens but I always put it in a different place every single time um I wanted to check in right now because we're getting to an interesting turning point so 
basically everything that's on the back cover has happened. We've met Cordelia, we've met her mother, whose name is Evangeline, and her mother is... Her mother is this evil, powerful sorceress who basically has never had anyone say no to her in her whole life. Like, she's someone who thinks the answer to everything is just to overpower anyone that's going to say no to her with her magical abilities. She can also control people, animal things with what they call obedience, where, I mean, she does it to Cordelia, where she essentially takes over her body and Cordelia feels almost like she's been pushed back in her own brain. She's still conscious, but like her mother is controlling everything that she's doing. They go to church and Evangeline is making Cordelia sit there like straight up, not moving a muscle, a fly lands on this poor girl and it's like bothering her, it's like tickling her, but she can't move, she can't do anything and she just has to sit there for their whole church service. And she does it all the time and she does it for like days on end where poor Cordelia just has to like deal with her mother basically like controlling her. And then when she comes out of it, it's like her body just like, huh, like relaxes and it's really traumatizing for this little girl she's only 14 years old and her mother has been doing this to her since she can remember so that's terrifying and her mother also does it to other people she just like takes takes them over and controls them so they've kind of run out of money evangeline had a benefactor a man that she would go visit and he kicked her to the curb so she decides to kill him and they go to another place, which is this rich squire of the town, city, I don't even know. But he lives in this big manor house, he's older, he has money, and so that's her next like victim, so that they can maintain the lifestyle that they are accustomed to. Actually a better lifestyle than what they had. And we get Cordelia's perspective, and she is just this terrified little girl. It's actually really hard to read the first couple chapters where she's so alone and she's so helpless and she has been so isolated through her mother's doing where she used to go to school she doesn't anymore she only had one friend she had no idea how to even communicate with this person to like ask questions of do you live a similar life to me like is your mother also a sorceress or is it just me like do you get controlled the way that all of these things she's asking like is this normal is this normal and then when they go to the squire's household hester enters the picture and hester is the squire's sister she is this older like spinster woman she's in her 50s she didn't want to get married and hester has this ability to have like premonitions where she was actually going to get married off but she sensed this like overwhelming feeling of dread and doom and never ended up getting married and she had the same premonition about Evangeline she like woke up in the middle of the night and she calls Evangeline doom and she's like I just have a feeling that doom is on the way and I have to protect my family and my brother. Esther very quickly picks up on the fact that Cordelia is basically getting abused by her mother and really likes this girl at first she was questioning like is Cordelia in on the fact that her mother wants to like marry my brother like what's her role here because she seems too innocent she seems too quiet like what's going on and then she very quickly realizes no I need to help this girl and so getting to that point was such a sense of relief for me because like reading about situations where a character is extremely hopeless and doesn't have any support, has nowhere to turn, has nowhere to go, and she just has to deal with this hand that fate has given her, it was really difficult to read about. And now I cannot wait to see what Hester does and like where she takes us because she's immediately so calming to Cordelia. She invites her to like embroider with her and they get to like talk and get to know each other and Cordelia is terrified of everybody. Like she's terrified of talking, she's terrified of walking into a room. She's just the most timid girl and rightfully so. Her mother wouldn't even let her close the door to her bedroom ever and she walks into this house and she's like there's so many closed doors everywhere. Like what is going on? Hester and Cordelia seem to be quick friends and I can't wait to see what happens but it definitely started in a very dark place and I'm extremely unfamiliar with the Grimm Brothers Goose Girl story. Like I have no idea what that story is about so I have no idea where this is going but 
I'm here for it. That is the update so far. That's also kind of the like synopsis. That's where we're at. I'm hoping to get to page like 150 today. So I will keep reading, but I wanted to take a little bit of a pause because I have to edit um, a vlog and I kind of want to make another coffee because I am very sleepy. I went to go lay in bed for a little bit while reading this and I'm like nonstop yawning. I was like, okay, I need to get up. I need to move my body. I need to make a coffee because we have things to do. We can't just take a midday nap. So I will check in once we have read a little bit more. are now about halfway through A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. King Fisher. I couldn't put this down last night. I didn't want to. I stayed up until like midnight just reading this book because I didn't want to stop. There are still parts that are hard to read just because of the mother-daughter relationship and that like level of abuse like I mentioned in my last update. Um, it's a little bit triggering for me personally. I'm sure that like most people who read this book are going to be fine, but that's like a personal problem. <sighs> I'm at the point where I truly have no idea where this is going. I will say it's not an overly plot driven story. I think my main things are I love Hester so much. She's so, she's so eccentric and just original and true to herself. Like she's not trying to fit in. She's not trying to be anyone but who she is. She's also really gone against the social norms of this time. It's definitely giving historical fantasy. So if that's your vibe, like it is mine, you will like this. She's going against the grain of society, but also they have friends. Like they've started to invite other people over to this manor house. And even the other friends that have been introduced are very just welcoming and accepting of each other, even though a lot of them go against the social norm but they're also in high society so they have the they have the privilege to do that and not like get judged for it we're definitely just vibing i'm hoping that it does get to a point in this second half of the book where things start to pick up the pace it's almost giving and there's no murders so like i'm hesitant to say this but it's almost giving like cozy murder mystery vibes but make it historical fantasy and make it a tea king fisher book there's a blurb on the back of here that i read just before i started doing this update that says her delicate bittersweet style of fantasy is like nothing else on the shelves and i just i really agree with that because it's almost like she doesn't always some of her books are more plot driven than others but she doesn't always have a super strong plot she has these like character dynamics or certain topics that she wants to explore in her writing and i feel like this book her main focus was how to overcome an abusive relationship but also like an abusive parental relationship and also how to find support in a situation that you thought was completely hopeless and very despairing so i think that's the update for now more to come
Apparently this is my most favorite updating spot. I don't know why, but it has become my, my most frequented. Anyways, I come here with news. We have finished A Sorceress Comes to Call by T. King Fisher. I finished this earlier this afternoon and I wanted a little bit of time to sit on it because the second half I think dragged a little bit more for me and I say dragged very very lightly because I had so much fun with this like really really and truly I, I definitely enjoyed it but it was very very slow my favorite parts were the parts where Evangeline we had our main antagonist in the story with us because there were times when she was off dilly-dallying with the squire. She was off trying to get her mans. We fell into some lulls and it was a lot of character interaction. Like we just got to see Cordelia and her entire arc from where we meet her to the very end. I love the conclusion that we got. I love how much her character grew throughout this entire story. I also loved the entire friend group that we got to experience because Hester just has the most interesting and accepting and funny and witty friends, but it's giving historical fantasy where a lot of the scheming parts of this like murder cozy mystery, they were sitting in an embroidery room just like on the couches or like playing cards with each other. Like there was definitely boring moments think of if you read grace Draven's, um i think it's called entreat me by grace Draven. i'm just gonna check but if you read that book it's a very similar like cadence you just have these slice of life moments with the characters and those are the moments where we just got like so much of that in the second half that i was like can we can we get to the next point please because it's she's slow and she is only like 320 pages to begin with so i was like we don't have time for slow parts in this story but because of those reasons like i said i finished it earlier this afternoon i wanted to sit with it a little bit before i gave it a final reading i am gonna stick with a four star because i think about the first half of this book when i was flying through i fell into the writing i didn't want to stop it's also been quite a while since i've read a book physically and I was a little bit nervous about that because I feel like when I go from reading ebooks audiobooks back to a physical book I read very slowly and that was not the case with this one I felt like I did fly through it so four star we love T. Kingfisher maybe I'll actually start to read my August TBR that I said I was going to read which has Paladin's Grace on it and I like literally haven't touched it so these notebooks have derailed my TBR, that is safe to say. This is where I'm going to end this vlog. I'm about to jump into starting a weekend of rotting and reading romance, which I'm so freaking excited for. So I'm about to start that vlog next. I also don't know whether to, just because we bought Lady Macbeth in this vlog, I don't know whether I want to count this as like a romance or not and put it in this next weekend reading vlog that I'm about to do because I really want to read this. I just don't know if you can like really count it as a romance because it's definitely historical fiction, like historical fantasy, probably maybe. So anyways, if you want to see some of the other books that we picked up in this vlog, make sure you subscribe. I post every Sunday and Thursday. I also stream on Twitch on Tuesdays and Fridays and we play out some games together. Twitch is linked down below. I will catch you in the comments. If you've made it this far, leave a little goose because we read a reimagining of Goose Girl and I will see you in the comments. I will see you in my next video. Toodles.